the focus of what we're going to be talking about on the operation side is really going to be eight different modules, but it will be kind of weighted, I think, 50-50 with the importance of, of um, income and finances and the, the stability of having your finances in order. So having a wait list, the marketing, the touring training, um, and, and the follow-up, all of those systems and being able to implement that for yourself, but also being able to train your management team to be able to do those things so that you are constantly full. You're making sales when you're not in the building. We have um, one resident who just um, left and we have another tour today, right? And we have a, a wait list and people have been coming and touring. And so we're here in Idaho, but still our team, our our our, our care, um, managers have been trained on on the marketing, on the touring, on all of those things. So it's going to happen without us. And I think that is the foundation of our success, being able to have the stability of income and being able to build a wait list, which allows us to raise our bed rates and be um, a little more of the uh, aggressive side on pricing has been the foundation of our success because it allows us to have the consistent income to bring on two managers, which allows us to travel and not be there all the time. Um, and then also the ability to pay, we, we are paying the highest for caregivers and for chef out of everybody around. So those things I think are kind of the foundation of, of our success and the success in on the operation side is heavily weighted towards finance sales, marketing, touring. So we'll spend a, a good amount of, of this on that portion and give you, it's, it's not going to be like just like a, a one time we're going to talk about sales and touring and then you should know it all. Like it's going to be an interactive thing that we'll be able to um, over the months grow with you all and show you whether you're, you're open or not, how to fill your beds, how to get those deposits in. Will you turn that off? Yeah. Um, so whether you're you're open now or not, it is going to be super, super applicable because, you know, again, like part of our story is we had almost all of our beds sold with deposits on before we got our license and being able to hit the ground running like that and, and pay for the manager right up front and have all these front loaded expenses that we are able to cover because we know, you know, month one, we have a, a large amount of income coming in. So that's going to be um, a big priority in the operations training is this idea that really everything is built on the foundation of a stable income and a profitable business. So that's that's what we'll be hitting pretty hard. Um, in addition to that, Laura will be going through our operations systems. And um, I'm not going to steal her thunder and talk about it now, but the 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 principal premise to it, right? The um is that we are now in a position where we travel a lot, we spend a lot of time with the kids, um, we focus a lot on, on teaching you all. Uh, really, it's a four hour work week for us. And it's more a four hour work week for her. I really um, don't work there at all any longer. So this idea that there's these repeatable systems that we can bring in a new caregiver, we can bring in a new manager and plug them into a framework of systems that allow us to be owners and not operators. Um, it has really been a success for us and for our family time. So I think really th those are the, the the two components here, the the finances and the framework to be, I guess, a kind of a passive owner and not like a, an owner operator. Those are the two kind of core um, principles that we'll be talking about over the, the following weeks here. And uh, Laura will kind of break it down. Um, some of these things we'll do together, these calls. Um, some of them she'll just run by herself, but we'll just be sharing like, here's what we are doing currently. Um, and this is, this is working for us and we'll share like, here's what we used to do. And it, you know, it did work and then it stopped working or it just never worked. And we just found a new way. So at least, you know, like, here's what's actually working right now. And there's, you know, so many things have changed in, in the COVID world and the inflation world and the numbers have, have drastically changed. And you just have to, uh, again, just kind of account and, and sometimes it's just trial and error, but when you have someone ahead of you who is doing trial and error, then you get to skip all the errors and just go to what works. So um, that'll be a huge advantage for everybody. But I think that's really the underlying premise of this operations training is to 
get you to a place where you are a semi-passive owner where you're spending more time with your family and that is only really allowed when you have the income to be able to do it so that is my little intro i'm gonna have laura take it over here yes so with all that being said um i think when we first started in this whole industry we were taught that it's going to be easy from day one, you know, you're going to pass something off to a manager and you're not going to be involved at all. And it's going to be daisies and roses and you're going to make 50 grand a month and like all the stuff. Right. And so I think that we were sold the belief of all this, but we weren't taught actually like how to run it and actual operations of this. And so I think my heart behind all this is to actually break down granularly um, all these modules that we're going to be going through. Brett said we're going to be going through eight. And so I'm excited to be able to share that with you, share exactly what we do. Um, and like what Brett said, exactly what we used to do that didn't work. And to be honest, like we're still trial and erroring some things as well, you know? And so uh, being able to share the processes that are working and are killing it now. Um, and even while we're in the midst of it, being able to be like, hey, we're doing this right now, but it sucks and it's not working. <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> so um, I'm just excited to be open and honest and be just like totally transparent with our business because I feel like we weren't really granted that opportunity. And I think that um, we really learned the hard way by just like falling on our faces. And um, there were a lot of tears and a lot, uh, a lot of hard seasons in the first year. Um, and, uh, you know, it will be difficult getting up and running. I'm not, I'm just gonna be completely transparent with you. The first like six months are a little bit more, you know, labor intensive when you're there a lot and you're making sure the systems are in place and that your manager is, you know, making the right decisions and your caregivers are trained appropriately. And like, you know, either you're going to be there to be, make sure that all that's being done. But, you know, we can say three years later that we're a lot less involved because we have trained up those managers um, and they kind of know, you know, our core values and what we really want for platinum. And so, um, that's a lot of fluffified stuff just to say that like, Hey, we're going to be real transparent with you. We're going to open up everything for you. If you have any questions about anything, like just ask, uh, no question is a dumb question. I remember getting involved in this in the beginning. I didn't want to ask certain things because, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Like you're, you're just kind of like, is that a dumb question? Or I don't know if that's a good question or they are to go over that or, don't even worry about it. Like I am the queen of like silly questions. So please just throw them at me because it's probably not a silly question. I'm sure everyone else in the group is probably thinking the same thing. So just ask away. Um, and then also, you know, make sure you get involved in the Facebook group. If you guys have questions there, I know that um, a lot of other individuals are probably dealing with it too. So make sure you get in conversations with people in the Facebook group as well. So we want to make sure that we can, you know, just fully support y'all in every aspect of, uh, what you're going through. And so, um, so like Brett said, I'm just going to briefly be going over what we're going to be talking about on these calls. And, um, I think that what Brett said about the sales and marketing is something that we really are excited about. We, um, it's something that I think we do really well in. And so <laughs> I'm excited to share that with y'all. And so that's going to be something we're going to start with because I know majority of you don't have, uh, you know, their house open and, you know, in production and, you know, have residents and everything like that. So we want to kind of get like your basic foundation understanding of how to fill your beds, because that's really what we want here, right? We want to be able to help and serve people, but we can't help and serve people if we don't have the income to support that. So um, the first, I would say the first four calls here that we'll do, we'll probably be doing a sales and marketing call on pretty much like the basis foundation on how to get started, how to get the word out in the community, um, you know, how to be that, that person in your community that people know, oh, hey, you need to send your loved one to, you know, that assisted living because it's fantastic. It's well run. I know the owner, you know, he or she has a great heart to love and serve people. And so just being that person in the community is vital. And so I can teach you how to do that. I'm a master at that. Like I, I literally, I think everyone in Georgetown, if you ask them about assisted living, they'll be like, oh yeah, Platinum Resort, Laura, I know her, you know, I've walked through her home. It's beautiful. Um, and so being that, that go-to person within your community is really important. And it takes time. It took me a couple of years to, you know, be that person, but, 
Um, once you're that person, I feel like the referrals come in and that's when your wait list really starts to build. And so that's something that we're going to really focus on. So sales and marketing, um, sales is, is, I would say is kind of a, um, sales and marketing. I, we, we have them in two separate modules, um, because we have sales is more as like the touring and the answering the calls, uh, because how are you answering your calls and are you able to sell a bed over the phone? And so that's a killer move right there. If you're able to sell the bed over, over the phone without them ever actually seeing your house, like you definitely are a good salesperson. <laughs> so that's something we'll be talking about too, about, you know, how are you talking to your, your potential customers on the phone when they first calling you? Because that's their, that's their real, the first really thought or view of you is how you're talking to them over the phone. And so it's some, one of those things you don't have to think about. I think in the beginning, we were just like, okay, let's get the house done. Let's get all the permits done. Let's get our license. Let's get all this done. And then, and then we're, we finally passed everything. We're like, okay, good. Oh, okay, good. We're done. And then it's like, oh no, crap. Like we're just started. <laughs> now we have to fill the, the house. Now we have to get all the employees. I have to train everybody. And so it's like, um, we, we kind of thought we were at the finish line. And what we realized is that we just did the warm up and we were about to, you know, run the full marathon. Um, and so, um, yeah. So, so marketing and sales, we'll talk about kind of in two different, um, I guess, frameworks, even though they kind of do marry each other a little bit, they do kind of blend. Um, and so I think that's the number one thing I'm really excited about is, is teaching you guys the sales and marketing aspect of this. And even if you're not like the outgoing, uh, you know, people person, like I, I would say I'm kind of like that. I'm very outgoing and I'm definitely a people person. That doesn't necessarily mean, oh, oh gosh, man, I'm not going to be successful because I'm not like that. Like, no, you don't, you don't have to have that personality per se. Uh, you can even hire, hire somebody that's like that, that can go out and, and, and be in the community. But I mean, I would say Brett's not very a social outgoing individual, but he's still out in the community. People still know him. And so it's just using your strengths, utilizing your strengths and your personality uh, to get out in the community and be known. Um, and so Marketing and sales, I, like I said, we're going to be really, really focusing on that hard just because we know that you, y'all, that's probably something that you'll need right now and that you can start building right now. And so I think that a lot of times people are like, well, I don't, my, I don't even have walls up in my house. Like I'm not going to start marketing my home. Yes. That's the most important time to do it. Like I would highly suggest every single one of you to be out in the community, to be going to chamber events and ribbon cuttings and galas and fundraisers, whatever you can do to get, get out there, meet people, um, tell them your heart, tell them your vision about your home. I mean, people are going to be drawn to it. I'm telling you, once you tell people what you do and what you're working on, they're gonna be like, Oh, that sounds amazing. You know, and you're going to hook them right away. So I always tell people don't wait until you have your license and your doors are open, then start marketing. Like that is not good. You need to build that foundation before you hit that, you know, when you're, when you're actually open. So um, if you haven't started getting out in the community and started talking about what you're working on, do it. Highly recommend it. Um, you know, I would track how many meetings I would go to when we were under construction. I was going to like one meeting a day in the community, just talking about platinum and just like sharing my heart. And um, gosh, it, it created a following. And so if you get out there on your social media and you're showing like your, your home, even if it's just a foundation, you're talking about it, like people love that stuff. They want to follow your story. Okay. So even if you just have land per se, um, get out there, show your land, talk about what you're going to do. People will eat it up. They want to follow you. They want to follow your story. So sorry, I could talk about all, we can talk about sales and marketing forever. Cause that's like one of my things that I really love talking about. So, um, sales and marketing, those are two of the eight modules we're going to be talking about. Um, the next one we'll talk about is hiring. And like I said, I know you all aren't really at that point yet, but I think it's important to still kind of break down and discuss because we had a lot of trial and error in that too. Uh, and granted COVID kind of put a wrench in all that, but, uh, we'll show the tactics on, you know, uh, how we hire and who we hire and, you know, what kind of questions we ask during interviews. I think I've interviewed a lot of people and I can kind of, I can literally sit down with someone for five minutes and know if they're going to be a good fit for our home. And so we actually have a questionnaire, like interview questionnaire that we'll share with you. It's all the questions that we ask. And I can tell you exactly why we ask what we ask so that um, it's kind of like the the backdoor approach for like, I'm trying to get a certain answer out of them by asking this question. Uh, and so I'll share that with y'all, which is 
it's super beneficial. So I, you could even, you could use it, you cannot use it. It's just an extra resource for y'all to have. Um, we'll also talk about resident operations and this may be a lot of calls because resident operations is, is a, a big chunk of, you know, running your home. And so we'll talk about, you know, the admission paperwork, the assessments, the care plans, uh, the medication management, and, you know, the binder updating and outside services coordination, family communication, um, and then also resident issues. So we'll like, I think each one of these topics will probably be a call. So it, it's going to deep dive a lot into these things. And I don't want it to be overwhelming because it kind of can be in the beginning. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. I'm just trying to get my permits, let alone like <laughs> talk about resident admissions, but it's something that you do need to know and something that you do need to have. And so we'll share all that stuff with you, we'll walk you through it all, why we do what we do um, and exactly how to build the binders, what to say to the families if something happens, um, you know, how to deal with resident issues. And so those will be something that we'll talk about. And like, again, like it's going to be a deep dive. It's not going to be something that we're just going to skim over. And so I'll kind of have the same um, kind of like layout as Brett does, where he usually talks the first 30 minutes. And then if you have any questions afterwards, we'll kind of, we'll go into that, but we will keep the meetings at an hour because I want to respect y'all's time. And so um, they will be from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So I'll try to keep it as <laughs> brief as possible. Um, and so after that, after resident operations, we'll talk about staff operations, which is the fifth module. So we'll talk about, um, you know, orientation and training and medication delegation um, and, you know, scheduling, you know, discipline, um, you know, the cook and and all that. Brett will get on on talk about the cook and how to, you know, order food. And, and there's a lot of systems that we have in place for all this. And so we want to share it all with you. Um, actually, side note with the cook, Brett actually used Chad GPT to like build a full year menu for platinum. So he can show you exactly how he did all that. He put in all these like, gosh, super cool things with like the holiday meals and not using, you know, same meal twice within like the month. And like, he did all this cool stuff and it like spit out this whole year menu and it's pretty awesome. And so um, that's super, I mean, we're going to share it with you too. So it's a, it's a great resource for y'all to have. Um, uh, the six module is ordering. So we have a whole system set up for ordering all of our, you know, our PPE, all of our cleaning supplies. And so we'll share that with you too. That's something that well, you, know, you never think about. I, I never thought about that when we first started, you know, like, oh, cleaning supplies. Yeah, we'll just get them. But no, they just come automatically. We have all of it set up on um, an Amazon order. And it took us about a year and a half to figure out how much stuff we'll need. And it probably for y'all too, depending on the size of your home and, um, you know, how many bedrooms and bathrooms y'all have. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about that and the system of that. Um, and then the seventh module is finance. So Brett will, will hop on that call and he'll talk about, you know, the bills and the mortgages and insurance, um, invoicing residents and payroll and uh, anything regarding finance. Uh, we'll hop on that. And that'll probably be broken down into like six weeks, I'd probably say. So deep diving into all of the finance questions regarding um, staffing and such. And then the last module is kind of the module we don't really talk about very often, but it's maintenance. So just maintenance around the house. Um, you know, we have a touch up log. So when a when a resident moves out and the house need, or the room needs to be touched up, we'll have a little log that our managers will go through and check off, you know, different things that need to be touched up before the new resident moves in. And so just sharing different, um, you know, room turning, like what do you do when a room turns and and the processes for that. So that's pretty much the eight modules we'll be talking about. Um, and I know it sounds like a lot. I've <laughs> Everyone's like, yes. <laughs> um, but I want it to be because I want you to understand all that goes into, you know, operating and assisted living. I don't want it to be uh, something that we just skim over and that, you know, you're just thrown into this new venture and you're not sure how to systematize it. Like, I want you all to be super confident in every every role and every module we're going to we're, we're, we are going to be going over and so um you know like i said ask any questions if you don't understand something just ask uh and if you actually have a better system than the one i'm teaching you could share and tell because i mean i am the i am a constant 
I, I learn, right? So I'm a constant student. I'm a forever student. And if there's something that you think is better, that works better then share it. Like I bring it on. Like I, I want to learn too. Um, and so we're all in this together and it's, um, I'm just excited to really just deep dive because like I said, we never got that. And so I'm excited to be able to, to give that to y'all and to be something, a resource that y'all can fall back on. And so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the call today. I just wanted to just kind of build the foundation for what we're going to talk about and hopefully get you excited and not scared <laughs> what we're going to be talking about um, on these calls.